Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be about something that uh, us parents are obsessed with. Now I'm not talking about baby poo, but I'm talking about baby sleep. So if you talk to any parent of a small child and they constantly talk about sleep, how many hours at night, how many wake ups and such things. So this video is going to be about the basics of sleep, the things that you should be doing to help your baby sleep better at night and of course you. So these are the things that I have used with both my kids and that have helped me a lot. So I hope this is useful to you as well and before I start, um, hang in there, it's going to get better. No matter what it seems like right now, they are going to sleep through the night one day and you will get that 8 hours of sleep again. Okay, so let's start now. Uh, number one would be uh, routine. So babies like routine. They like to know what's coming next. Um, they like predictability. So as early as one and a half to two months, they start settling into a routine of their own. So if you don't help them make it according to your convenience or what you would like, they will just um, make a routine that they like and they're going to stick to it. So with some children, it's uh, pretty easy to know uh, what routine you should follow because they have fixed wake up and fixed sleeping time. You can set your clock according to the time they wake up and the time they go to sleep. And with some children, it's a slight bit difficult to find a routine. But whether you can see it or not, whether it's apparent or not, most of the children have a set routine. So what I suggest you do is uh, take a diary and write down every day or uh, exactly what time they have been waking up, what time do they take the first nap, second nap, third time, what time do they um, take the feeds, what time do they wake up in the night. So if you do it for two or three days then you would see that they do have a set time of waking up. So for example they might be waking up anytime between 7 to 8 every day in the morning and going back to sleep between 6 to 7 in the evenings. So um, based on those timings, then you set up um, the nighttime routine. So just to give an example, my son now is 10 months old and we have the routine of bath, story time, bottle and then sleep. So in the evening, once he takes bath, he knows that, um, okay, the time has come for you to go to sleep and um, he kind of expects it and it's easy for him to go to sleep like that. Okay, that was one. Number two would be do not stimulate them before they go to bed. So do not play with them, uh, do not let them watch TV, do not take them out in the mall or do anything that stimulates your child. Because it's kind of same like us adults. If uh, we're quite stimulated before we go to bed, we find it hard to sleep. Um, it sometimes takes an hour or two for us to go to bed, go, uh, to fall asleep and then we wake up more in the night also. It's the same for children. So do something that calms them down, that relaxes them before their bedtime. So you can maybe um, sing a lullaby to them or you can read stories to them. I know sometimes it's very difficult especially when um, both the parents are working and they come home late or one parent comes home late then he or she wants to spend some time with the child before the child goes to bed but um, you can read stories to them, you can sing to them, you don't need to play with them and stimulate them because then it's very unfair of you to expect the child to go to bed when um, you're done with them and then to expect them to sleep better at night. It's just not fair and it's not going to happen. Uh, the third would be, don't think that if you overtire them or if you keep them up in the day that they're going to sleep better at night. It doesn't work like that with kids and I have learned the hard way. Uh, my first child was not a very good sleeper so we tried everything and the things that I'm talking about is what worked with him and what's working with the second one as well. Who sleeps slightly better than the first one? So, oh, Sorry to digress, but what I was saying is um, if you keep them up more during the day, then they get really, really tired and with kids, uh, they don't become sleepy and they don't become relaxed and they don't go to bed easily if they're overtired. In fact, they become hyperactive because their brain secretes a hormone called cortisol, which uh, helps them stay up and the cortisol stays in their brain at night also so not only will they have trouble going to sleep 
if they're overtired but they will also wake up at night because the cortisol will be there in the brain and will wake them up okay uh, so uh, that was that I've written down the points so that I don't forget it um, all right all right so this point is regarding helping them sleep for longer stretches of night so don't rush over and pick up your child immediately as soon as you hear a small sound or a small cry or whimper from them give them a few minutes give them a chance to fall back asleep on their own because um, just like adults babies also wake up um, a lot at night and they need to learn to settle themselves back at night otherwise if you rush them over and pick them up every time something happens like the hand hits the side of the cord or um, they turn and the eyes flutter open they would want to be picked up and to be settled by you because this is what you have set a precedent of so let them try to self soothe let them try to fall back asleep this doesn't mean that you let them cry. This doesn't mean that you just give them a chance to fall back asleep on their own. All right, so the last point is to teach them the difference between day and night. So at a very early age, um, let them know um, that day and night is different. So how do you do that? So let there be a little bit of light during the day. Don't use blackout curtains. Um, let the normal household noises be there. And don't you turn around. I'm not saying that go and shout at the top of your voice or make unnecessary noise. It's just that make some efforts to keep it quiet, but don't keep it too quiet. And at night, obviously, it's going to be quiet and it's going to be quite dark so that the baby knows that it's different. And this is the time to sleep and this is the time to stay up. Because I've heard a lot of parents stay. Uh, say that uh, the baby is up all the night and sleeps through the day which is not good for anybody neither for the baby nor for the parent because um, we can't sleep like that we can't sleep through the day like a baby everybody sleeps, says that sleep when the baby sleeps but it didn't work like that for me because i just couldn't go to sleep the moment the baby slept it happened once or twice but it didn't really work so but these are the things that worked for me and I hope that these points would help you and help the baby sleep better and in turn make you a well-rested happy mama or papa. <laughs> so this was the first video in a series of videos that I'm going to do. So this was the baby sleep basics. I'm going to do a sleep training video for four to six months and then a sleep training video for 10 months to one year. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.